Hello everyone, this is Lucas and I'm making this video as a tribute to the corrupt photo radar and privatized registration system here in Edmonton, Alberta. What you are looking at is a home build electric fat bike that I built. I built this bike because I am in dire need of transportation. The first time I was ever pulled over in a vehicle, I was pulled over in my truck camper and I lost it because I had switched plates from a vehicle that had just died onto my truck camper um, because I needed it for work, to come for my company and to survive and uh, the police impounded it and I lost everything. Enter fat bike. What you're looking at is a uh, standard fat bike kit that you get from Uncle Wieners here in Edmonton fixed with a custom build electric engine kit that I bought from Amazon. This is the cheapest electric kit you can buy from Amazon. It is a 250 watt motor. The kit cost me $100. All in all, this entire build should cost you under $600, but I will warn you that this is a master bicycle mechanic build. If I wasn't a master bicycle mechanic, which I do consider myself, despite I don't have a ticket, but I mean, the proof is right here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's that. So the first thing that you're going to want to do with your fat bike is you're going to have to find yourself an extra freewheel. Now, I tried to get one at Revolution Cycle here in Edmonton, but the kind of stuff that they sell for freewheels is just kind of junk and will not work properly um, with the fat bike configuration and the dual freewheel adapter. As you can see, I have no spacer in there. I didn't need one. This uh, freewheel that I uh, installed primary before I installed the diamond freewheel that came with the kit is um, just off of an old BMX um, that it pounded off with a punch, but it seemed to work fine. Then I installed the freewheel adapter and then the diamond freewheel. Um, the motor itself was a little bit of a problem because the standard mounting plate that comes with the Amazon kit does not fit the fat bike. So what I had to do is I had to take the bent bracket, which was right here. I heated up the bent part as hot as I could with the Tiger torch and pounded the whole thing flat on the anvil side of my vise, and that was for the, both the top and the bottom part. The standard clamps don't work, uh, so what I ended up doing was getting these U-clamps. I got these U-clamps from Lowe's, and these U-clamps come with these straight bars. I actually used two of the straight bars, so it takes two clamps to make one. Two straight bars, a washer, a nut, three washers, a washer, lock washer, and then lock nut. And on the back here is I have, I believe it is five washers and then the same configuration for the lock nut. And the reason being is, is that this isn't quite straight. If you look here, see how it's a little bit pitched, but you have to do that in order to get your chain straight. Your train must be straight or this thing will just jump off sprockets and give you all kinds of trouble. For the lug nuts at the back, um, I don't have, as you can see, I don't have the bracket directly on the main lug nut that holds everything together here. This is actually a lug nut off of a 10 speed and this is a, a 17 millimeter head as opposed to a 15. So I got the 10 speed lug nut, I have the bracket and then I have a 15 lug nut here of the standard that came with it. Now, when you put all this stuff together and you get the new free wheel on there, you're gonna find that your chain is either way too loose or way too tight. Now you can't have a loose chain because it will fall off and I'm not talking about the motor chain, I'm talking about your actual crank chain. <clears throat> and it'll be too loose or too tight and this is just because the fat bikes aren't designed for a standard freewheel and I racked my brains about how to get around this and what I ended up doing is I ended up using a round file and I actually filed down the crank each tooth in between each tooth individually until I could get that chain at a nice tension so it goes around nice and easy otherwise it's too loose or too tight the motor chain itself isn't a problem because of the brackets and everything else you can actually have lots of play and move it around and I haven't had any problems with this configuration at all so that's how I did it okay if you don't have access to a tiger torch and some way to pound this bracket flat you're never going to get to any of the other steps so this is the most important thing that you need to do everything else you can kind of work around 
The battery compartment I have at the back here is the standard Oxford Banker box that I um, spray painted flat black. Um, this actually, no, this is a midnight black. These uh, fat bikes come uh, pre spray painted midnight black. Um, I had to drill a whole bunch of holes in them for everything from the tail light. This tail light I got at Princess Auto is a standard 12 volt uh, tail light, but I'm actually running it off 24 and it seems to be working just fine. I, I was going to wire it to 12, but I figured ah, I'm going to see if I can wire it to 24 and see if it'll work and it works. And they're cheap, so if I blow it, I'm not really concerned about it. Um, I had to get these metal stays here um, and I had to make them. Um, how I got the metal stays to fit for the battery boxes on either side of the bike is kind of weird, but I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, I have two at the front here, as you can see, where I've actually tapped right into the frame. And I've also got it uh, a third one in the back here, tapped right off here, and you can see it all bolted underneath there. On this side, on the motor side, you're able to put the bolt in the uh, proper way, but you still want it to sit out a little bit um, because of what I did on the other side. And you can see I got three nuts in there as the spacers. And on this side, I actually had to feed, if you can see that, it's kind of hard to see inside there. But I actually had to feed the bolt the opposite way with the tire off. So the head of the bolt is on the inside, and then I fed it this way out in order to get it around the brake and everything else that was here in order to get the stay for the battery box. Inside the battery box, I have four uh, big lead-acid batteries that I got from Battery World here in Edmonton. Thank you so much. Um, they're 12 volts, which I have wired into series in order to both charge and give me the 24 volts that I need to power the electric motor. This is just a standard lock box. Um, it's just a standard lock box, cash box. You don't have to use this kind of lock box. You can use whatever you want, but I do recommend that you use a lock box for your wiring. Um, and as you can see, the wiring in here is a bit of a nightmare. Everything in here with the kit is pretty straightforward. Um, your motor controller is right here, and they've made it so that it's not too, too complicated. For the motor controller, I mean, everything plugs into basically what it's supposed to plug into, but I had no um, I had no wiring diagram for this, so I just kind of had to plug things into the motor controller with power in order to get, it was like, you know, trial and error, hit and miss, until I got what was supposed to be where. Because you do have sensors on your brake levers, you have your throttle, you have your uh, ignition, you have um, a light pack, um, you have all kinds of stuff that needs to be plugged in. One thing I did notice with this kit though is it did not give you an on off switch for the light pack. So even though that I turned my ignition on and off, oh sorry, right here, I turned my ignition on and off, the lights stay on if I plug them in. So I ended up adding an extra two pole switch at the back here, or on the side, right here. And what this does is it turns my lights on and off, see? Without the use of the ignition, which is handy because I don't want my lights running to when I'm um, under power during the daytime because that's going to suck my power. Uh, any other modifications I had to make to this? Um, this is a uh, Abus lock I got for it. Obviously, I need a really good lock here. We've got a lot of bike theft in Edmonton, and this thing here can't be cut. Um, this I did buy at Revolution Cycle, and it, it made me sick that I spent like $130 on a lock, but I did. So, but it can't be cut. Um, yeah. Uh, also got a can, uh, I was saying before, I think it was Midnight Black Spray Paint. Midnight Black Spray Paint did all this and all this kind of stuff. The wiring off of my batteries is all recycled stuff. I just use uh, standard uh, spade connectors. And um, these are just old power cords. One's off an alarm clock. I think the other one's off of a bunch of other different things. But, I mean, it's good high-quality wire. Make sure you use good quality wire. And I do have my uh, nipple up here holding everything together. I haven't installed one in the bottom yet because I'm not sure I have everything that I want wired into the box yet. So... But once I get that in, there will be another nipple at the bottom as well. Um, up here for the headlight, it used to have this really weird squirrel on it and the scuffing from turning it up and down. But I took a coffee cup, I stuck it over top of it, and then I just took my X-Acto blade and cut an arc out of it so you get rid of the squirrel because the squirrel looked kind of stupid. But that's just my own opinion. I have the horn up here which is uh, also connected to your light. Um, I don't have the key turning the ignition right now. Actually, actually, I have to the light the lights on for that to work. Right? You can see the horn works. I got a full charge according to my power meter. And uh, yeah, that's about it. 
So again, this is Lucas showing you guys all how to make an electric fat bike for under $600 minus the labor. The labor, this all in all probably took me two, three, and it took me four days to figure it out. Uh, there's a lot of downtime and thinking and it took me four days and quite a few bags of weed to figure this thing out. But um, now I got it running and I'm actually happy with it. Um, it's not very powerful, not very powerful at all. The maximum speed I've got it up to under power is around 39 and that's on a full charge. Um, that's 39 kilometers an hour. That's not fast. And that's about as fast as a fat bike or a power bike is supposed to be. So this one here meets all legal requirements, um, for an electric bicycle. And, um, that's what I was going for. I wanted to make everything legal. I wanted to make a ride that anybody could, well, almost anybody could build. And then if you're hooped and that you've gone through the problems that I have with, uh, Alberta registries, your, uh, police and all this other wonderful things you have and your photo radar and all this crap, um, that if you need to pay bills and that you need to get to work, you now have a ride to do so. And uh, remember, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and wear your helmet and be safe.